The Holy Gospel this morning comes from St. Luke in the third chapter. Now as the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John and whether he might be the Messiah, John answered them all by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'm intrigued as people wandered around back then that they found themselves along the Jordan River filled with expectation. And in the process of that expectation, discovered uh, that they needed to hear a word from John the Baptist. And then in hearing a word from John the Baptist, wondered if he might be the promised Jewish Messiah. John immediately puts that all to rest, of course, by saying, no, it's not me, it's one who comes after I. So John is very clear at least, that he is not the Messiah. But that does little, of course, to suppress the expectations of those who were looking for something, whatever it might be. I mean, these are are people who have gathered along this Jordan River, which even now is rather paltry as rivers go, to, to find something, to find something that they could grab onto that would provide meaning for them, that would fulfill whatever expectation they were bringing to it, whether it was under the thumb of Roman rule and authority, whether it was under the destitution of their lives or whatever it might have been, there was something that drew them to the river. And what is so interesting is that something drew Jesus to that river. He is there filled as with those with expectation. And what exactly does our Lord expect? when he is baptized? Does he expect what he gets? Does he expect anything at all in receiving the baptism? Because if he, like those who gathered around John, was filled with expectation, I wonder what he brought to the font or to the river in his case. Now, they always tell me that unspoken expectation is tomorrow's disappointment and exasperation. So it is always best to articulate your expectations, whether they are at least vocal or whether they're just in your mind. It's good to know what you want to get out of something so that down the road you're not exasperated and disappointed. It's very hard for people to know how to help you if you do not say what you need help with. And so whatever the expectation Jesus brought, he was in prayer, he was offering it up to God, and the heavens open, the Spirit of God descends on Jesus in the bodily form, like a dove, the the image of peace, the image of hope, the image of a promise, of a future, of a rainbow of life. It descends on Jesus, and he hears a voice, you are my son, with you I am well pleased. But what does he expect? I mean, in some ways we could say that no matter what happens to Jesus from this point on, these last three, four years of his life, whatever it is that's written about and articulated in these Gospels, they they had to at some point, right, kind of miss his expectation. Because certainly you can't expect that a guy hanging on the cross who, who quotes Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? is someone who found their expectations met. Someone who, praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, says, my God, not my will, but your will be done, but if this is the only cup, then please, your will be done, is not someone who says, well, that hit all my expectations. 
I mean, was Jesus' life just constantly one disappointment after another? One more person turning and walking away and saying, I can't do that. One more person who finds a way to say that's impossible. Someone who is always nitpicking at him, wondering, micromanaging him, wondering what he's doing, all these sorts of things. Disciples and friends, and not to mention Pharisees and everybody else. I mean, in the Gospels, the only time Jesus is really happy is when a woman breaks social and conventional norms and actually does something just for him. Like talk to him in the middle of a day next to a well or pour expensive ointment over his feet because he's going to die. Most of the time, the dude's walking around shaking his head going, you got to be kidding me. So when we look at baptism, it's vital then not only for Jesus to see what's been given to him, but for us and what our baptism means to us. And especially as we begin this year, what do we expect God to actually do? I mean, I suppose it's okay that you can just say to God, listen, God, 2018 was okay, and and I got 2019, so if you want to just take some time off, if this is some time you need, if you want this is the one where you want to go down to Belize and hang out on the beach, I got this. Or do you actually expect God to make a difference in the life that you lead, in the words that you say, in the actions that you do? I mean, most of the time, if I'm any example of it, we run around and at best we pay God a metaphysical compliment every now and then, like say something like, well, that was really good, thank you very much, and seriously, how hard is it for the Vikings to get into the playoffs? What do we actually expect God to do? As you sit here, January, what is it, 13th? Do you expect to see peace? Do you expect to see hope? Do you expect to see love? And if those are your expectations, have you actually voiced them to yourself or to anybody else? And one of the things I learned from my kids, and I I don't know if I'd have known this if I wasn't a parent, and certainly didn't understand it as a child. If you want your kids to, to do something, you actually have to tell them what to do. And that goes against all my grain, because I thought that God would just We'd come out of the womb knowing how to use a fork. You ever tried to teach a kid how to eat? Like a human? With a fork? Holy cat! You you pull that off, you can do anything. You know what? If you're ever worried about your children, just remind yourself, they eat with a fork, I'm good. But you gotta tell them. The expectation is is we don't put food all over our face or on the floor or on the table. The expectation is is that food is a gift from God is either eaten or politely given to somebody else to use. And a fork is a civilized, relatively clean way to accomplish everything but soup. Although every single one of you had your kid try to eat soup with a fork. I know because I did that one myself. This is precisely what Jesus is faced with this day as he gathers himself at the edge of that river. It's precisely the question that you and I are faced with every morning as we stare at a candle over a baptismal font that is lit in memory and honor of our day in front of that font and in front of that candle, however many years ago it may have been. Because the expectations are still there. And if they have not been articulated of what you expect from God or the Spirit or from Jesus, they are going to continually resolve themselves as unmet disappointments and frustrations. It is our life, our gift, to be able to come to this font and to lay bare all the failures of our lives, the things we've done, the things we have left undone. 
to be bold in our commitment to admit that we do not know exactly what's going on and the expectation is, is that somehow we'll still be here next year. That we'll still have friends who like us. That we'll still have ways to be able to find shelter or food or whatever 2019 may bring. But We live in this reality of God that you are invited each and every day of your life to come in the presence of God who descends upon us in bodily form like doves or water or bread or wine, who comes into our lives and fills us so that the expectations we bring for ourselves, for each other, for our communities, can be met so that we can gather together as people of God and say this is what God is asking of us and this fulfills our hopes and our dreams. It meets our expectations. There will be 2019 in all probability. I'm guessing this is not the last year because as you all know, hell won't arrive until the Vikings win a Super Bowl. We're good for another six years, I think. But the reality is is that some of us may not be here. As you look around this room or any room, there's no assurity that all of us are going to be able to gather a year from now in this place, although there will be people who are gathered here. A few of us may not make it. And we understand that. It's not our preferred future should it happen to us, but it is precisely what baptism is all about. The expectation that we can count on the promise of God as long as there is one person, one human being gathered around this font, gathered around this table, that the presence of God is alive and well, and that the presence of God will fulfill all our expectations, whether we are here or not, The presence of God is precisely designed to descend upon all of us and fill us with hope and love, peace and joy so that all our expectations can be met. The voiced ones and probably the unvoiced ones too. Amen.